This is Graham from .easy coming to you with another video. Today we're going to be showing you how to set up and configure the Mac Mail program. We're going to be showing you this based on the current version of Mac which is called El Capitan so that you can easily see how to set up this program. It is the default mail program that comes with the system which is why we're showing you how to set it up here. It's probably the one you're going to find yourself using a lot if you're using a Mac itself. We're starting off here as you can see from the actual .easy member zone. This is where you would go if you went to the .easy site to log into your account. The reason we're starting here is we're going to show you where to find the actual email settings online so that you can easily get this information and follow along with us to easily set this up as well. So we want to start off by scrolling down here to where it says hosting plan which is first heading going down the page. You can see it here. I'm going to be clicking on where it says view email client info. This is where we can actually find the settings. You'll see there's the secure settings and the non-secure settings. Now, depending on which account you have set up with us for the email, we'll determine what the screen shows. It'll be slightly different if you're on Smarter Mail. In this case, we're on a cPanel email server. If you're on Smarter Mail, you'll actually just see one option in this box here. If you want to set up the secure SSL settings on the Smarter Mail, you want to contact us and we can walk you through how to configure it instead on a cPanel server and get that switched across. Just contact support and we can easily walk you through that. We're going to be setting this up on the secure SSL based settings because it's just more secure and easier to use that way, better settings to use all around. We will be going through and showing you where all the other settings are entered just in case you need to use one of the other settings so that you can easily follow along with this video as well so not to worry. Now that we've viewed the settings here, we're going to start off by clicking on mail, this little icon here you can see on the screen, and then we're going to be opening this up. As you can see there's no accounts listed here right now. We want to start off by clicking on where it says mail at the very top menu and then go down to where it says preferences. Here we want to make sure we're under the accounts tab at the top here. You can probably see it'll have an iCloud account. This is just attached to your Mac already so you don't need to worry about this. You can just ignore it. And we're going to click on where it says the plus icon here. I'm going to start off by asking you what type of account provider. We're going to be going to other mail account and click on where it says continue. I can ask you for the name, in this case you can just type in whatever you want here, where it says email address, we're going to be typing in the email address that you've set up. If you haven't set up an email address yet, you'll want to instead contact .easy and we'll walk you through how to set that up, or you can check out our other video for how to set up email accounts as well, and you can easily follow along that one. Once we've got that in there, we're going to put in the password as well, and then click on where it says sign in. Gonna try and grab some information here but that's okay we're not going to worry about this little red mark here where it says it's failed to go in we're going to start off by going to where it says username or although it says automatic we actually do need to put it in it's actually just simply your information here so we can copy that across and then type it out just as before and then the password is just your email password it should already be entered in there so we're going to leave it in here it says you can choose between IMAP or POP. If you're not familiar with the difference, the difference between the two is POP will go ahead and actually download a physical copy of all the messages from the server in your inbox onto the computer itself. This will make it so that there's a separate copy stored on the computer as well as on the server. If you delete one, it does not delete the other. They are completely independent of each other. This is good if you need to store emails for longer periods of time and either don't have the storage space on the server or just want to have it locally backed up somewhere as well in case something happens. The IMAP will do the opposite. It will not store a copy on the computer at all. It will instead show you everything that's on the server, which means you're quite literally synchronizing up to see what's on the server anytime you open the mail program. The advantage to that is if you delete an email from your computer, it deletes it off the server. If you have any other devices set up like a phone or a tablet and they're also set to IMAP, it'll remove it from all of them together. It makes it very easy to manage if you have more than one device. In this case here, we're going to be setting this up as POP, just to simplify it here. Now where it says incoming mail server, we're going to be typing in the actual server address. If you didn't grab this earlier, again, you can find this on the screen. It's listed right here. So we're going to just quickly grab that information here. You can go ahead and copy that across. Not a problem. We're going to go in here and we're just going to paste this across like you can see. And then the outgoing server is going to be the exact same section of information. We always have the incoming and outgoing server the same to make it easier for you guys. You can see it's already removed the name, so we're going to type this in again. And then we're going to click on where it says sign in. I'm going to test the settings and come in here after it checks it. 
and then we're going to quickly go ahead and grab this information here and then what we're going to do is we're going to go through a couple of the settings here just to be on the safe side because there are some things you do need to check within the mail program but to start off by going to where it says advanced here now what we're going to do is we're going to go down and just make sure the settings are what we set them to which is where it says port 110 it says use ssl we want to make sure authentication is password where it says allow insecure authentication you want to make sure that is not checked the other setting we need to make sure besides these ones are checked is where it says automatically detect and maintain account settings. We want to make sure that's unchecked because one of the big problems with this is if you do leave it checked, it'll go through and change the settings whenever it feels like it, which means you will run into errors down the road. Now, the reason why we came in to check here is as you can see where it says port number and the SSL, you can even see it was already wrong. It was showing 1110 with the SSL on. If you're using POP, you can set the port number to 995 if you're using the secure socket layer settings. If you're using the IMAP, you want to set it to 993 like it's got here. If we're not using SSL settings, then the port number for the incoming should say 110. Otherwise, if you're using IMAP, it should say 143. Again, if you're not using SSL. So we're going to be changing this so it is using SSL, so that's fine. The way we save this here is you need to actually close down the program. The settings here, it'll ask you if you want to save the settings. We're going to click Save. That makes the incoming work. We're then going to go back up to Mail. We're then going to go back into Preferences. And then we're going to go under the Count Information tab this time. We're going to go to where it says Outgoing Mail Server. You'll see there's a series of servers in the list here. We need to actually go to where it says edit SMTP server list. This will bring up the actual outgoing servers. This is where you go if you want to get access to the outgoing server information. I'm going to click on where it says advanced here. Again, you'll see this automatically detect and maintain account settings option here. You want to make sure to uncheck this. It is important because otherwise it can lead to problems on the road. You can also see the port number and the SSL are again actually entered incorrectly by the program when it set it up the first time. So we're going to uncheck that for now. The outgoing port, if you set it here, can be 587 is the best one to use if you're not using SSL settings. If you're going ahead and using this and having trouble with 587, you can also use 25, but you need to be careful with the port 25 because a lot of internet providers will block and restrict access to it because they want to use it only for their own networks only. So we're going to go ahead and use the SSL instead and then we're going to set this to 465 which is the secure port to be using. Now if you're using your POP or IMAP it doesn't matter the outgoing settings are always the same so we would use this setting we've shown here. You want to make sure that the authentication is set to password the username is your actual email address and then the password is the actual password itself. So once that's all set in here, exactly like you can see it now, you want to click on where it says OK. And all the settings should now be set up properly. So we can close this out and we can actually test this. So we're going to go to the compose new message here. And then we're going to send this to ourself. You want to make sure there's a subject line. In this case, we're putting test. And then in the message, you want to make sure there's also something in the body. You want to make sure these two are entered just so that if you have a security program on the computer, it doesn't discard the message thinking it's something illegitimate or a spam or something like that. So it is important to make sure that's in there. And we're just going to send this from ourselves to ourselves. This way, we can test both sending and receiving at the same time. Now that we've got that done, we're going to send the message off. And we can see it went out here. And then for now, we're going to go ahead and just wait and make sure the message comes in properly here. So for this here, it could be a little troublesome because you have to wait for it to come in. The other way we can try and force this to come in as well, besides, is also just to close down the program entirely, which you can do by going to mail at the very top menu and then going to where it says quit messages. And then we can simply open that up here. And you can see the second message that we created here has come in without a problem and it's showing up that it's working fine. So with this all set up here, we now it's all good to go. It's all set up and running. You'll be able to send the email from any other account to any other account without any problems whatsoever. If you do encounter any problems with this, by all means, contact our support. You can reach us by phone, by live chat, or by email, whatever's more convenient for you. You can also leave any questions you have about this in the actual video comments area as well. 
we'll be more than happy to try and get back to you about that. If you have any other requests for any other videos or any other information, you can always go ahead and reach us on our Twitter as well as our Facebook. Leave us any kind of information you need there. We'll be more than happy to try and bring other videos to you as well. Otherwise, this will show you how to set up the MacMail program without any problems to send and receive email. Thank you for watching.